banning TikTok and revisionist history. What do these two things have to do with each other? They're both being mandated by the same guy. How's it going everybody? I recognize I'm wearing a white shirt just like in the last video, but uh, trust me, this is definitely a different shirt. I just picked up a white shirt again. But we're not here to talk about my shirt today. Today we're here to talk about what Donald Trump is attempting to do in my country. So first of all, we have this sketch by Kendra. Then we have another Florence art by the owner of all OOs. And then finally, we have the subscription bell being absolutely destroyed, or about to be, by Disco Scone. As always, thank you all for your fan art submissions, and let's get into today's topic. So the first bit of information I want to get into today is Trump's attempting to ban TikTok. Now, TikTok is a platform that allows you to upload 15 to minute long videos on there, and it used to be Musical.ly, but then it got bought out, and now it's TikTok. Talk. So sometimes people go on there and do memes, sometimes people go on there to do little music videos and sing-alongs. There's a lot of stuff you can do on TikTok. Some people go on there to talk about religion and politics. That's what I do on mine. So a while back, Trump held a rally, and at this rally, he thought he was going to get millions upon millions of people pouring into the stadiums. Turns out, he actually only got a handful of people because the millions and millions of people who signed up were actually users from TikTok who were trolling him. Shortly thereafter, Trump decided to go public with his announcement to attempt to ban TikTok from the United States unless it got bought out by a US company. Now, it's kind of funny because he says that it has nothing to do with the rally and his personal ego, but that announcement came pretty much directly after the rally. We've also had news articles going back for a pretty long time about the data breaches where TikTok is concerned. So this has been a known public issue for a while. The fact that Trump didn't decide to actually speak about it that much until after he got his butt hurt because people didn't come to a rally is honestly kind of telling. By the time this video goes live, which will be Wednesday, Trump will have already taken the first step, supposedly, in getting rid of TikTok, which is removing it from the iOS and App Store respectively. Now, supposedly, this should make it to where people are not able to download TikTok, but it's not going to actually affect the experience of users who already have TikTok on their phones. Moreover, anybody who's had TikTok on their phones will still be able to engage in financial transactions on the platform until about November 12th. And there are companies who are in talks to try to buy TikTok to establish a United States division for that company so that these issues don't actually come up and users can continue using TikTok as they do. But there's a little bit we need to talk about where this is concerned, and that is about Android devices and how this is actually going to affect the Android environment, or rather how it's not going to affect it. You see, the Trump administration seems to have forgotten a couple of things. The first thing, and the most obvious one, is that VPNs exist. If you just region lock TikTok out of the App Store or out of the Google Play Store, you're not actually stopping users from downloading TikTok. All they have to do is just use a VPN to change their location to anywhere where TikTok is available, and suddenly this stops being an issue for them. But there's another more technical way you can get around this, and it's the way I've been using for years to play things on my phone that I'm not technically supposed to. You see, if you're an Android user and you've been doing more with your phone than just making calls and playing random games off the Play Store, then you know that its executable files are called .apks, they are the equivalent there, and that every single thing you download off the App Store just creates a shortcut on your phone that allows you to access the .apk. Remember, an APK is functionally equivalent to an executable for Windows. Now, for anybody who's been a fan of my channel for any amount of time, you know that I'm big into trading card games. I enjoy playing card games with people. I like the social aspect of trading, battling, and getting competitive, and going to regional events. So, there is one game that I wanted to be able to play on the go, and I did not yet have the ability to, and that was Hearthstone. Now, Hearthstone is a game that is primarily played on the computer, but they, at some point in the last few years, released an Android tablet version of the game, but they did not release one for the phones because it was not currently optimized. The solution here would be to get an Android tablet, but I was poor. I didn't have the ability to just randomly buy an Android tablet, even if it was on sale for 50 bucks. So, I found that there was this lovely thing you could do called downloading the executable, or the APK, directly onto your phone. I did this with both the Pokemon card game and the Hearthstone card game. 
Pokemon does not have an option outside of the tablet, and even though Hearthstone has now developed a mobile version of their game, these did not yet exist. Now, granted, these versions of the game are optimized for tablets, so they drain the battery on your phone pretty heavily, but that doesn't matter, because the point is that the programs work in your environment, because they're coded to work in that environment. TikTok doesn't necessarily have these issues, and remember, downloading and executing an APK is no different than grabbing a random EXE off the internet. So, banning TikTok isn't necessarily going to ban it from being in the United States, and banning the transactions isn't going to stop people from using it, because millions of users use TikTok regardless of whether or not they gain any monetization from the platform at all. Ultimately, this may hurt the numbers of the amount of users that end up being able to use TikTok in the United States, assuming nothing gets resolved, but it's not going to actually stop the security breaches because TikTok will still be available in the United States perfectly fine, either through use of the VPN or through use of downloading an APK directly. Most importantly, it's not going to stop random TikTok trolls from making the president look like a fool. Though I guess this is what happens when the president and gets butthurt and decides to actually go mask off with his authoritarian ban hammers. But speaking of authoritarianism, that gets us into the second issue at hand today, and that is that Trump is attempting to engage in some revisionist history. Now, this isn't just Trump spouting ahistorical facts on Twitter. This goes a little worse than that. Trump wants to actually remove previously set up educational standards in the United States and replace them with something he calls patriotic education. Now, Trump, the authoritarian, the pseudo fascist has multiple times attempted to withdraw funds from the United States public education system because they've done this, that, or the other thing that he didn't like. One of the most recent examples of this is when schools did not want to open because of the obvious pandemic around us, and Trump said that he was going to withdraw funding from schools that did not open. Something that he technically can't do, but it doesn't matter whether or not he can do it. The fact that he threatened it in the first place is in fact what matters. If you aim a gun at me, it doesn't matter if it's not loaded and I know it's not loaded. If you think it's loaded and you try to pull the trigger, that's all that matters. That's the beginning and ending of that transaction. You attempted to kill, that's it. So what is Trump actually doing? Well, he's using something called the 1776 Commission to engage in what's called patriotic education for the United States. This is an attempt to reframe all of United States history in an incredibly pro-US version. Now, Trump is saying he's doing this because of far left-wing mobs that are destroying American history, though when he says destroying American history, he really means tearing down statues and slave owners and stuff like that. So I don't know if this is necessarily destroying American history, but Trump seems to think it is. So he's engaging the 1776 Commission as an attempt to re-educate America into why our country is so great. He specifically says to educate people on the miracle of American history. Now, anybody who's been through the public education system already knows that United States history is horribly whitewashed. Whether or not you actually get educated on the full extent of the Trail of Tears, for instance, is up to anyone's guess. It sometimes happens and it sometimes doesn't, depending on what school you attend. The extent that you actually get educated on what we did when we engaged in the slave trade is up for grabs. Sometimes you're educated fully on the extent of it. I know I was. And sometimes you don't really understand and you get told that the Civil War was fought over states' rights and not states' rights to slavery. This reframing of education into America being the best of the best in all times is already a reframing of the education system that we already had that whitewashed America to begin with. Trump is doing this in response to the 1619 Project, which is an attempt to show the true scope of what America actually is, showing everything that we engaged in in its fullest as opposed to whitewashing it. But reality is often incredibly inconvenient to Donald Trump, which is why he likes to do things like ban TikTok, even though that won't actually ban TikTok. All that will do is somewhat reduce the numbers of TikTok users that can grab the platform easily. Trump has said that the only path to national unity is through our shared identity as Americans, but we can share an identity as Americans while understanding that America might not have ever been a truly great nation. Because when you try to say that America was always a great nation, then you breed complacency. You breed people who want nothing than to uphold the status quo. But is the status quo truly good? 
Trump seems to be under the impression that if you don't believe America was ever truly great, then your next logical conclusion would be to destroy America. That's not necessarily the case. There are plenty of Americans who are proud to be Americans and want to reshape our country into something that is better than it was before, as opposed to holding up an idealistic version of the past and trying to achieve that constantly. And if you want an example of this, look at all the people who glorify the 1950s, irregardless of all the problems America went through in the 1950s. It's not as good as you remember from Andy Griffith. Trust Trust me. And if you don't trust me, that's perfectly fine. Just look up when we ended Jim Crow laws. Spoiler alert, 1968. Thereabouts. But why would Trump try to engage in this public re-education of American youth? And I don't think you have to actually try really hard to look at the connections between this and what goes on in places like North Korea or what happened with the Hitler Youth. And I know there's going to be somebody in the comment section going, Godwin's Law! Godwin's Law! But if you look at the things that Trump is actually engaging in, they're not terribly far off the mark. He's literally gassed his own citizens just to get a photo op. What do you expect? My conclusion here is that we already have an incredibly whitewashed version of history taught to us in the United States, at least when you're in the public education system before you get into university. I don't see why we should try to make sure that it is even more whitewashed than it already is. I think all you're going to end up doing is painting an inaccurate version of America for everybody to just rally behind. But I think that's actually the goal here. I don't think the goal here is to try to make things more realistic. I think the goal is to try to make things get painted even more rose-tinted so that it's easier to control American. After all, if Americans believe their system has never truly been broken and has never had any flaws and has always been good and the few bad things we've actually engaged in like slavery, we were the ones that corrected anyway, so it's a self-correcting system, it must be great, why would they ever want to dismantle that system? Why would they ever want to reform that system? That system is good and it brought them the greatest country on earth, America. That system couldn't possibly be in need of any kind of reform. That's the kind of mentality you're going to breed. That's the kind of mentality I used to have. That I lived in a just world, and everything would work itself out correctly, and there was never a point in time where the system may need to be analyzed and scrutinized more for what it actually is, instead of what I think it is. But trust me, if you think the generation that grew up on smartphones are not going to be able to educate themselves on what actually happened in American history, and you think that the generation that grew up on smartphones is not going to be smart enough to download the popular app that they're used to using when you get rid of it from their phones, then you're living in a delusional society. And because of the attempts at re-education, I'm assuming you want everybody else to live in the same delusional society that you've constructed for yourself. It's literally a safe space for conservative snowflakes. If you don't believe conservatives are snowflakes, then burn an American flag in your front yard and see how many people get upset. It's an amazing experiment to see exactly how far freedom of speech goes for people who don't understand what freedom of speech is. But that's all I've got for you guys today. If you'd like to do any further reading on this topic, then please check the description below to find some news articles on what's been going on with all of this, and you'll be able to engage with this topic further that way. If you also want to engage with this topic further in the comment section and talk amongst yourselves, then feel free to do so. Any criticism you might have, anything like that, that is also welcome down there. I welcome any type of criticism of any kind, even if you just want to go down there to call me fat and ugly. Though, the rules will still apply as they do in my live streams. If you're going to insult me, please, please, please be original. I do not like reading unoriginal insults. The rule on insults is pretty simple. If you can imagine a three-year-old saying it in the playground, then chances are you, as an adult, shouldn't be saying it. Please remember to leave a like, share with your friends, leave a comment, do all that fun stuff that the YouTube algorithmic gods demand of you, and if you don't do it, then they'll probably smite you, and by you, I mean me, actually. Like that, that stuff, that stuff only affects me. It, it really does only affect me. Uh, but we are at the end of the video. If you guys enjoyed, you know what to do. And as per usual, I want to give a shout out to my patrons. These are the people who let videos like this happen, who let any video that I do happen. I'm glad that I'm able to actually get support in any form, but financial support is the thing that allows me to keep food on the table. So this is this is certainly the, the best way, like the absolute best way, though sharing and engagement and all that other fun stuff is equally good, if not better in the long run. Um, so uh, is there anything else that I want to talk about here now that I'm at that unscripted, unedited part of the video? Eh, not really. Oh, well, I guess there is one thing. Um, if any of you have like really old, uh, like first generation Pokemon cards and don't mind getting rid of them, I will gladly take them off your hands. 
Uh, and I don't mean the expensive stuff. So if you've got like a first edition Charizard or something, don't send that at me. That's like $20,000. That's that's a bit much. I mean like like 10 cent commons and uncommons. I've, I've been engaging in my childhood a lot more often lately, uh, revisiting some old games and stuff like that. And I realized that I was a dummy as a kid, getting rid of all my Pokemon cards, thinking that, ah, these will never be worth anything. That was a, that was a mistake. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed. If, if any of you want to do that, then hit me up, send me a message. If not, that's fine too. This is shot in the dark anyway. Uh, anywho, thank you guys for watching. As always, insert into video tagline here.